This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. It is 6.01. I'll now open the September 26, 2022 meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission. This meeting is being recorded. This meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission will be conducted in person and simultaneously via remote participation online to the greatest extent possible. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately act access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the City of East Hampton website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Should an interruption occur in which the online meeting ends abruptly, both the in-person and online meetings will not be restarted, and all agenda items will be automatically continued to the next scheduled meeting. I'll also note that we have one commissioner uh, this evening who is fully participating remotely, and we have one commissioner who is listening in but is unable to see exhibits, and so will be abstaining from any votes. Um, are there any public concerns or non-agenda items? I have not received any. All right, hearing none. Do we have, um, our first public hearing is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by GZA on behalf of Stephen Thor Johnson of Sage Advisors for resource area delineation at 85 Main Street, map 154, lot 32, 32.1, and 32.2. Uh, the mass DEP file number is still pending. Uh, do we have nope. here yet for that meeting? We do. And also, I just want to say we did get the file number. It's what is that? 151 0321. One five one zero three two one. That's correct. And there were no comments associated with that file number of issuance. Thank you. <laughs> Stephen. Dan, I believe you're here to speak to this yeah, item. Yeah, we are. You, you're all set? Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself, please? Great. Thank you. This is Dan Nitsche, GZA. Uh, also, uh, this evening is uh, Jackie Claver from GZA, worked, who worked on the delineation. Uh, Stephen Thor Johnson. Uh, who's working with uh, with the uh, uh, Kestrel Land Trust? He's with Sage Advisors, and uh, Mark Wamsley, who's a project uh, manager for uh, Kestrel Land Trust, is here this evening. Uh, last week, uh, uh, Jay and and Cassie were uh, willing to brave the uh, brave the wet weather and uh, pending more more rain that day. Uh, but we covered the entire property. Um, I, I would say for the for the uh, commission's understanding, the stream systems that are primarily in the western portion of the site. We looked at a couple of representatives of that. Uh, what we found is that they're fairly um, obviously incised into the landscape. So it's not a guessing game of where the streams are. We found them in some places to be six feet deep uh, in terms of their incision into the landscape. So they're very well defined uh, out there. Um, the, what I would like to talk about just briefly on the plan it identifies, and Cassie, are you able to bring up that site plan? Yes, I can. Hold on just a second. I'll share my screen now. Thank you. Oh, she's pulling that up. If I could just ask a clarification question. Yeah. I noticed in the uh, in the filing that alternately Kestrel Land Trust and uh, Mr. Uh, Thor Johnson are identified as the applicant. Can you just clarify who is the officially the applicant on this project? Um, I'm going to let... Uh, Kestrel or Steve answer that. I think Kestrel, uh, Steve is working as a consultant for Kestrel Land Trust. So it's so Steve or um, Matt, you want to take that or Mike? Steve, can you answer that question? Right. First, I had to unmute. Or Mark, <laughs> if you're available, either one. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Um, Right. So I am, in fact, a consultant working for Kestrel Land Trust. Uh, Kestrel has a contract to purchase this property, but it is at present not owned by Kestrel. It's owned by uh, two brothers, private landowners. Um, it's been in the family for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking for that clarification. We had Steve's name down because he's been our primary contact for the project, but at the end of the day, it's a Kestrel Land Trust property. Not yet. 
Oh, well, when, when, when the sale becomes final, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so in terms of the delineation, uh, we were out there for a couple of days uh, delineating primarily bank resource and BVW. Um, the, um, on the map, uh, Cassie, if you go to like a site plan, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing this up, by the way. No problem. It's yeah, it's way down there. Yeah, uh, not go to the other one, the non -topo, topo one, because it's a little easier to look at. So, <clears throat> this is a, a property that was uh, this material was deposited post glacially as a large plain, a somewhat flat land. Over time, the streams, the fingers, we'll call them, that drain to the west. They're sort of in the central portion of the property and they drain down to the west. <clears throat> Those have been forming for the last 12 to 15,000 years of drainage flows over the landscape. And uh, what we found on the most western part of the property is the soil is a slightly different type where the water has been cutting more deeply. Uh, as deep as I said, six to eight feet we found in some places on the most western part. Whereas on the eastern end of those fingers of drainages, um, it could be a foot or two deep. It's fairly shallow. Um, so they're very well defined. And if you look at the plan, there's a couple of locations where we identify as unregulated bank. I think we are right there. Thank you, Cassie. In the low corner, the low southwest corner of the site, there's one. And what that means is uh, in the definition of stream in the Wetlands Protection Act, it refers to and I believe the phrase is those areas of the stream that are up gradient of, and they refer to wet meadows and other types of basically vegetated wetlands, so BVWs for the, for the most part. Any stream that's up gradient of that, which is only a channel and is not connected to a BVW somewhere up gradient, would be referred to, we, we typically refer to that as up gradient bank. So meeting the definition of stream, these drainages that do not have any BVW along the margin, and we walked that one that's in the southwest corner that Cassie's showing there. We walked that whole section and there was no bordering vegetated wetland until about halfway down the stream system or the channel. The stream, just so for commission's understanding, is that stream, that channel may be regulated by the Army Corps of Engineers but is not regulated by the Wetlands Protection Act until you reach a BVW. So about halfway down, there was an area of the side slope, the, the side of the channel has sloughed down into the, chan of the stream channel and has essentially created a BVW. So from that location west is all regulated by the w Wetlands Protection Act, WPA. Upgrading of that would not be regulated. So no buffer zone, no regulatory uh, controls under the Wetlands Protection Act. I'm taking the time to focus on that. We Not a lot of projects have this type of wetland where it's a drainage system, but it does is not regulated. And, and uh, some folks may know through the Wetlands Protection Act, it's at the point where the BVW touches that bank that from that point downstream is regulated, but upstream is not. So we have two of these on the property. I think we identify them just in two locations. That, that is that type of drainage system that has no BVW upgrading of it. The field portion, so as we can move to the right a little bit, Cassie, thank you. If there's any questions about that bank description I gave or the unregulated part, let me know. So in the central and eastern portion of the property is the field system that's been maintained for many generations as what appears to be more of a hay field type of a thing. I'm not seeing evidence of row crops out there. Um, but there are wetland systems, not uncommon, on these flat plains where we have wetlands that are in, that, uh, in those open field sections. So what we did is we used the aerial photography that indicated wetness very clearly and obviously. And we use that as a guide, as a starting point, and then we would transect or follow from the vegetated area in the wooded area. So let's say for the sake of argument, Cassie, you can go right to the middle around A, we got A flag 74, 75, 76, yeah, in that general area. So just to the north of that, you see, or to, I should say just slightly to the northwest of that, you see the tree line. 
So from there, clearly vegetated. But, no, but east of that in the open field, it's not so much vegetated because it's part of the field. It's being maintained. It's being cut down. So we're looking predominantly for hydrology, evidence of hydrology through soils. And what we found, similar to the aerial photographs, is that the hydric soil follows the areas that we saw on the aerial photographs as being inundated or some saturation during the spring. So you have sort of a finger in that central section. That's all a mown area right now or part of the hay field. To the, to the left of that, where you have flags 176, 177, that group, that's a long sort of drainage pattern in the open field. If you walked out there today, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice that it was there. Um, we saw water in it when we were walking. You can see how it collects water and drains to the western portion of the site. And once it gets into the woods and the topography changes enough, the speed of the water picks up. So the erosion picks up which means there's a defined channel in the woods. In the open field, we don't really have a defined channel, but we have a, we have a high, uh, vegetated wetland. If you really look, there is wetland vegetation in there, but because it's mown, it's kind of hard to see a real good population of wetland vegetation, but we have clear hydrology through hydric soil on those fingers all through the field. And we show, we demonstrated that to Cassie and Jay in the field where we dug in the wetland, we dug in the upland to show the upland soils were more brown, meaning more oxygenated. And in the wetland, they were more of a dark gray or a, a sort of what I call a gunmetal gray, sort of a dark gray color uh, that would indicate um, long-term wetness or saturation anaerobic conditions. So there was a clear difference between the upland and the wetland. I should maybe not stretch the word clear. In some cases, it's kind of diffuse because of the field system, but we were able to figure out the soil differences between the upland and the wetland throughout the whole site. In the front part of the site, it's the eastern part. So move to the right, please, Cassie. Thank you. Anytime you have questions, just shoot them out. So out on the frontage of the property, let's go down on the map. Thank you. This wetland system, sort of an odd duck, meaning that area drains to a defined channel very close to the road in around where it says H17. Yeah, thank you, H17, H16. There's a defined channel that we saw full of water because it was raining the time we were there. And it drains into a culvert that appears to be taking water away from this property. To be honest with you, we don't know where the pipe goes. We didn't find the end of it. There's a catch basin on the opposite side, so the east side of the road, that I would assume sends water back to the west into the property, but we did not see evidence of that at all. We saw water leaving, very freely leaving the property, but we're not quite sure where it goes. If, but it's not, it's not building up or backing up in the pipe system, so it's clearly a positive gradient, and I'm gonna have to assume that pipe is probably part of a road storm drain system, which eventually dumps into a wetland somewhere. So that's a BVW. Despite if it did or did not dump into a wetland or discharge to a wetland down gradient, we have a channel in the last 12 to 15 feet from the field. There's a small strip of vegetation right along the woods line, around the, excuse me, right along the road edge. Within that 15 feet is a defined channel. So that's our bank. The pipe, the culvert, that's a bank as well. But we definitely have a bank on our property and everything within that zone that's delineated has hydric soil and immediate up gradient is non-hydric soil. It took about two and a half to three hours to delineate that small section because we dug so many holes to figure out where's the actual edge of that, that system. So it, it's a large piece of property, but the wetlands are fairly defined. The field ones take a little bit more effort because a lot of the vegetation is, is ma managed or maintained, so it's kind of hard to have it jump out at you. But the soils really tell the story of what's more routinely wet on this property. Sam, yeah, where is that? What are the flag numbers for that last piece of bank you were talking about? But I thought you said it was near the road. That would be 1716H, right down by the edge of the road, H16, H17. Uh, no, sorry. I'm going to double check that. Cassie moved down. It's 23, 22. It's in that zone. If you zoom in, it's it's more of a sort of a rectangular shape flagging. That's the channel. Yeah, you see the shape of the flagging. Yeah. Thank you. 
And then you so, said there's bank more interior to the site, correct, as well? No, no, the, the bank okay. is only in the wooded area. So I would say 21, 22, 23, and 24, and 25 is the bank. Once you hit 25, you're just outside the wood line. Because 26, my 26 flag is on the edge of the field. So Dan, I'm looking at this on the fly, but I don't think that there are any H flags included in your write-up of regulated bank. So it seems like there may be some errors in what you're saying versus how the flags are described in the narrative that may need to be confirmed. We have it under um, border vegetated wetland, wet meadows. Um, but yes, I don't think it we, is. I mean, we could just, you know, we could send you an email or an addendum yeah. to disqualify that those four, we got four, five flags would represent bank and the remaining H flags represent BBW, if that would help clarify it. Yeah, I mean, I think you're asking for a, a resource area determination that's going to stand for three years. So we want to make sure that we spell it out correctly. Okay. Cassie, did you have anything to add or, or Jay from your, ex, your exposure out there? Uh, I will say it was helpful during the site visit, especially for the field areas, because the, and most of not well, almost all of them, they were able to not mow immediately in that area. I don't know how long, how much time had passed since the last mow, but you could see the change in vegetation starting to come in in the shape of the land, um, seem to correspond with what was being shown in delineation. Yeah, well, Cassie, the areas, go ahead, Jay. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm going to say some of the areas we would not have been able to tell what was happening if, the, if it wasn't raining as hard as it was. It, it wouldn't have been clear. You know, looking at, at, look, at looking at your map, it's clear. And as you explained, it was clear. Yeah, it was helpful that it was raining for sure to see how they yeah. matched up. Yeah. And Dan, the entire delineation was conducted in August. Is that correct? Yeah, we had did, yeah. we were out there for a couple of days and then a little follow up. So it's probably over a two two and a half day period. Can you please speak to any concerns or why you do not have any concerns about the fact that this was then conducted during a level three drought? I have no concerns because those soils are what they are for the last 15,000 years. The soils, the, the top 20 inches I'm looking at, which has probably been deposited or formed in the last 1500 years, uh, is not affected by this drought at all. We actually use water. We added water to the soil so we could see a true color. So the, the evidence of groundwater, as, as you know, is not, not completely necessary, but we were able to clearly see the soil uh, characteristics to help define where the water table was. So I don't, I don't, I, we didn't find it to be a problem at all. Anything additional from the commissioners or agent who were on site? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't. Questions or comments from the commission? Dan Buttrick here. Uh, just a quick question. Um, in my, where I live in town, which is fairly close by, just a little bit to the north, uh, there are super sandy soil areas, and uh, I think a lot of the, a lot of the drainage, like in my neighborhood, is by basically, um, basically dry well catch basins. I mean, they're 1950s era, but I don't think we, I think they mostly infiltrate. Is it? You mentioned that some of the. Um, some of the uh, some of the storm flow that you observed from the site was entering that pipe and then uh, not coming out anywhere apparently, but it appeared to be flowing okay. Could it be infiltrating through like some kind of uh, some kind of thing? Do you think, or do you think that's just not really consistent? It's it's very no. That, uh, that's one that's one thought we had uh, we had Dan. I appreciate that. Is it, it's possible that it's an infiltration catch basin? Because yep. because there's the land to the east of that of the road is too high. You would have to go three, four hundred feet before the grade dropped off 
where you could actually have positive drainage. And I doubt back in the day, they went three or 400 feet with a, with, a, with a catch basin drain pipe. So that's really good information. That makes a lot of sense why we're not seeing that going anywhere. It's just infiltrating. So it's an infiltration catch basin. That makes sense. Yeah. And uh, it's, kind of, it's on the other side of town, but it's like similar soils, I think. At, at one point, we were like struggling to find where White Brook went behind some neighborhoods because it's kind of you could see a brook here and then it would just completely turn into groundwater flow and other spots and then pop out again so it's pretty like sandy like superficial geology in the area um yeah but it, anyway just putting that out there anyway thank you, thank you. thanks dan uh, so to clarify for the commission, because I think we have several commissioners who've not dealt with an AMRAD before, uh, when an AMRAD is before us, we are being requested to confirm the boundaries of all resource areas on the site. This is, I think, a 54-acre site in total. Is that correct, Dan? I think it's around yeah, 54. Yep. Yep. Um, and that delineation then is good for three years. So there is no proposed work before us now. But if sometime in the next three years they wanted to do a project on this site, it would already be delineated and would have confirmed the delineation. So that's what we're being asked to do is to confirm all of the resource areas. Um, given the size of the site and the fact that um, we don't have, you know, our agent is not a professional island scientist, uh, and it's also not the commission's job to confirm, uh, to actually go out and, and walk all of the flags and check them. We have the option, and I would recommend in this case, that we looked at bringing in a peer reviewer, similar to what we did on another recent um, case, so that we have, you know, just that we're confirming that uh, we have another set of eyes that is going around and checking everything to make sure that everyone's in agreement before we confirm that boundary. That would be my recommendation, but I want to open it up to discussion. Um, I that's a good idea. And I had a couple of specific areas that were the intermittent streams that were upgrading them that you said might um, fall under the jurisdiction of the um, Corps, I mean, Corps of Engineers. I wasn't quite sure if you were including those as jurisdictional wetlands or not. He was not including them here because they're not, he's saying that they're not jurisdictional under the Wetlands Protection Act. Resource areas don't always line up perfectly between state and federal regulations. So we would have no jurisdiction over the Army Corps piece. He was just noting that for okay. reference, really. And then the, that little finger you said around like A176, I wasn't clear if you were including that in the delineation. Uh, yeah, you can see the delineation through here, the, the section he was talking about. Yeah, that is included as delineated. Okay, first. Thank you. I'm going to find the uh, chance to look at. I think that's a good idea. Group ask three. Yes. Jay, Dan, any comments? It's, it's a huge property, so it's a, it's a lot to take in. Well, we did cover quite a bit of it, and um, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, obviously it's your call, but I felt like we covered quite a bit of the areas, and we dealt with the what's usually the, the more difficult areas, the wet meadow, um, but it's your call. Well, you know, I'm not a wetland scientist, so... You know, I, I really can't answer a lot of the questions or, or, or understand things completely. You explain things very well, but again, I'm just, I'm not that person. The bigger the property, the harder it is. So, Aaron said a question. I see heads nodding, general yes. consensus. Yes. Okay. Um, Kelsey, do we, I don't think we have a motion. Do we have motions to request it for the That's a good question. I want to say yes. Can we have a motion? 
I move that we request a peer review of the property under discussion at 385 Main Street. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Uh, Clark? Aye. August? Aye. Weeks? Aye. Whittemore? Aye. Uh, Buttrick? I'm going to abstain because I can't really see the materials or exhibits. Thank you. Ryan? Aye. All right, motion carries. So what will happen next is that Cassie will put together a request uh, and an RFR to seek uh, three quotes for a peer review of the delineation. Uh, we will share that information and share updates on the timeline for when we're requesting that those be submitted and uh, make that available. And then once we know what that timeline is, we'll be able to uh, let you know when we'll make a decision to select that peer reviewer. Are there any questions from uh, anyone from the applicant side? I just say thank you for your attention tonight. And uh, it, it, I'm sure will bear up under scrutiny. Um, we hired Dan for a reason. Um, I believe he's one of your preferred peer reviewers. So um, our intention, Castro's intention, is to understand the resources, wetlands and otherwise, uh, to the very best possible uh, degree. That said, um, time is always of the essence and no less so when you're putting together a conservation program, hopefully. I would continue with Stephen. Thank you very much for your time tonight. And thank you for the members who came out to walk around the property in the rain. Um, but absolutely, thank you for your thoroughness and your consideration. Yeah. Um, are there any particular time constraints that you would like us to be aware of so that we can take that into consideration when we're crafting the request for quotes? Um, it would be incredibly helpful to have an answer by the middle of November. Okay, thank you. Well, I can't make any promises, but we'll see what we can do. Thank you. So, so that, uh, if I may, question? Certainly. Okay, thank you. Um, so the timing is going to be, we go to the next meeting and you issue your RFR, or are you going to do that before the next meeting? And then we'll, just I'm trying to figure out the we'll, timing. Too. We'll be able to, we should be able to issue the RFR prior to the next meeting, I believe, correct, yeah. Cassie? Yes, I mean, yeah. so. so we won't need to wait for a meeting for that. So we'll get that out uh, and we'll try to, to work the timeline backwards to try to accommodate that mid-November deadline. Um, for for having an answer, as, okay. as uh, we'll have to think about whether that's actually viable. But that gives us what, like seven weeks or so. So it might be possible. We'll we'll seek for that. So we'll try to okay. get our votes pretty quickly. Um, yeah, the next commission meeting is October seventeenth, and going in a little weird order next month. So we have a good chunk of time to get it. Okay. Requests and everything that I hope yeah. So. yeah. So actually, we'll, we'll try to be we'll try to be in a position to make a decision at the October seventeenth meeting. Yeah. If all if all things go well by the seventeenth, you may have you may have your proposal. Okay. Good. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you all Any for your time. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Good night. If there's any more, I didn't want to cut people off. There's more questions. Sorry. <laughs> We're all good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Obviously, since an end rag, we're not at liberty to know that the intention side for the property that if we knew that the property is in conservation. I think speaking generally um, within the AMRAD, you 
all we really know when you do an ANRAD is that the delineation is good for any future purpose for three years. So on a property of this size where there's a lot of potential uses that could be put forward, I think our our typical practice in the past has been to ask for a peer review and make sure that we're getting uh, lines that we feel very confident in because we don't know. It could change too. So they could say they're going to use this right now, but then circumstances change and there's a different proposed use. So, right. Right. Uh, yeah, I suppose if a conservation easement was already, or a conservation restriction was already fully in place that limited the uses, we might look at it differently. But given that that's not the case, yeah. we stick to our standard procedure. All right, um, we have no requests for a certificate of compliance this evening. Moving on then to enforcement actions. If I can, actually, we have someone here for a different item. Can we take it out of order? So okay, it's, item? it's item eight, uh, not eight, eight, eight I, thank you. No. <laughs> item eight I. Do we have a motion to take eight I out of order? Motion to take uh, eight I out of order. You have a second? I'll second. Yeah. I'll call a vote. Commissioner Carr? Aye. Commissioner August? Aye. Commissioner Weeks? Aye. Commissioner Woodenhart? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Ryan? Aye. Yeah. Commissioner Buttrick? Assuming. Assuming that Commissioner Buttrick is abstaining since he is listening in Aye. from the car? Aye. I'm for you abstaining either one. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, motion passes. So uh, moving on to 8I, which is an update on the project. Uh, East Hampton School Committee, Mass DEP file number 151305 for construction of the new school building with associated parking, driveway, utilities, stormwater system, et cetera, at 200 Park Street, Map 157, Lot 83. Okay, yeah, so you can introduce yourself and basically the premise yeah. is for a request to suspend reporting, correct? Yeah, okay. my name is David. I'm with uh, Colliers Project Leaders. Uh, the extension was from the Fontaine Brothers, not really from me, but from the uh, general contractor, in case we needed extra time to, to finish it. Uh, the, the site work is right now, it's scheduled to finish on October 14th. All the site work is what they had said at the last meeting. So um, that's what they're scheduling right now. All the blacktop, the all the uh, paving, we all be top coated, everything will be pretty much done at that point. I mean, it's all day. Uh, so at that point, uh, Cassie had gone out, uh, looked at the site. Don't move it back. I think it was a 16. Is that right? Yeah. Or was it more than recent? Yeah. And we won. So, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of it is pretty much done. Uh, so. I want sure to well, information. So and the request is to reporting requirements. So um they as it is right now, they have to send weekly reporting and then also of the road the status of the erosion controls and then after every rain event of zero point two five inches or more. Right. Um if they were, the, the condition allows for them to request to suspend that reporting requirement. Certainly they still have to meet their SWIP, require, SWIP reporting requirements. They're beholden to for the construction general permit, not our permit. Um, so it kind of just relieves them from having to send it to us. Um, so the main thing the commission is typically has been looking for when, when we get these requests is the stability of the site overall and whether or not the commission still wants to know what the status is of those erosion controls on a frequency like that um, of once a week. So I did the site visit and took a lot of pictures and walked around the entire perimeter with uh, Mr. Butcher and who else was there? Were you there? Or yeah. I believe Jay? Yeah. And Jay yeah. was there too. Um, so, uh, and I had highlighted really just one area where you're still doing work, which is in the rear of the property, if you were coming towards the school um, from, from Park Street. And it's where you work on the maintenance building, is that right? right. Yeah. So that's, that's the main area where there's still ground disturbance um, and loose loose soil um, that's not yet stabilized and some stockpiled soil as well. Um, we had seen the broken controls are still like functioning there seemingly. Um, I can share some pictures here in a second. 
And is the work in that area going to be done also on October 14th? Yes. yes. Um, I'm just gonna go here. So let me show you some pictures. Okay, go from there. Let's see. Well, Cassie is pulling those up. What will your ongoing obligations be at this point under the construction general permit for reporting? Well, at this point, I've been doing it once a week, uh, but I'd like to do it like every other week right now, if possible. Uh, but I, I could still continue to do it every, every week. That's fine. I mean, it's only a couple more weeks. Really. And is that something that you have approval for under the construction general permit? Because we have no authority over that reporting. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, you can do that. So I think if the if the reports are being generated for the construction general permit anyways, I think we would like to continue to receive them. I mean, okay. It's a matter of sending an, another email address, the same report. Yeah. Um, and we might as well continue to take a look at them. Okay. Um, if they did get their approval to reduce the frequency for the construction general permit to every other week, would the commission, would we want to say, okay, send it to us every other week or? Can we take a look at that? Yes, absolutely. So um, the first picture I'm gonna show you is, this is that back area and the, the controls are actually in need of repair at this time um, in that they have been flattened, the silt fencing had been flattened, it simulated to allow for mowing probably, because yes. there's, a, there's a break in the fence or an area in the fence where they can open it. Um, we think they were, had driven over to drive the mowers back there. Uh, let's see here we go. Okay, so like I said, this is the rear of the property, and um, I don't know if you can see my cursor at all. To the right here, that's the bound fencing here, and it carries on in this front. So kind of behind where I'm standing is where the majority of the work associated with the maintenance building is. Into which, the left. Sorry. sorry interrupt, which way is water flowing across the site here? Definitely towards um, the basin is to the left there. You can see the excavator in the back. So the right. basin is beyond there. Yeah, yeah. And kind of like from behind me forward towards the cell fencing that's in front of me. So everything's kind of like leaning back towards the back. Yeah. Okay. So before we go to further detail, I mean, what we're seeing in this condition. I don't like because we have obviously the field of the soil and the silt fence that's down. Right. This is the most recent site visit that we've had. The 16th. Yes. Okay. So I think before we even consider this, I want to see an updated site visit so we can get pictures on the okay. stability of the site. Because looking at this isn't going to tell us anything about what's going on currently. This was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So let's start there. Okay, cool. And then we don't need to take everybody's time to right. go through all the different things. I would just like to add, um, I was I was there dropping a kid off in that deluge on, what was that, Thursday last week, and, you know, in the front part of the site, the parts that you see, you know, when you're coming in from the road to drop a kid off, there, uh, the, the access road down seemed to be doing okay. Um, it, there did seem to be some, like, turbid water maybe coming from the, the work area, so like, you know, and it it looked like there's some of the, you know, looked like there were people, uh, you know, attending to it at the time. So, you know, to, to me it looked like uh, there's still some things to uh, button up before um, before I'd like to reduce like uh, the uh, the frequency of the stormwater you know, check-ins, basically. That's just my observation. Yep. Okay, well, has anybody else been by the site? Does anybody else have any information? I haven't been over there in a while myself. Yeah, so um, i trying to think what else I was going to say about this. The other um, yeah. thing that we might as well bring up briefly is just that there's still some question and concern that we've been hearing uh, about the functioning of yes. the um, stormwater basins, particularly, I think the one in, I want to say the rear, the, the largest one? Directions confused on the site. 
but the, if you were standing at the road, I think it's the rear left. I think I'm not sure if I'm getting that right. Well, I guess maybe what I can say is so we kind of talked about this at the site visit on the 16th as well, because I've been receiving those too. So there's the biggest basin that's in the rearmost part of the property. You can see like it would be beyond where this excavator is in this picture. Um, that's the one the commission approved the installation of an under drain for as a change, right. and that's not yet been completed. Okay. So it's just kind of receiving the water and holding it. Um, they've been working on um, dewatering that using the, the a dewatering bag and then letting the water flow down the, the big grassy slope there and then to be cleared, you know, ideally by the time it reaches the stream below. Um, the, I noticed that there's a basin, kind of like a riprap basin near the access road to the right if you were driving towards the school. That might be the one we're talking about because that's been holding turbid water. Pretty much every time I've gone on a site visit, there's been turbid water in there. So that's something I highlighted during the visit and made note of in my summer email to them to say, you know, if patients kind of want to know what the situation is with these uh, structures before any certificate of compliance is issued. And that's part of the stormwater permit as well. The, the city engineer will have to do an inspection and, and approve these things. Right. Yeah, right before this one. I don't know if this really rings a bell to you. Is this what you were thinking about? Uh, I think the... I thought that the emails we've been getting from someone from the public were about the one where the under drain is going to go, but I, yes. I may be misremembering and not certain. There was definitely that one. The, that email you were talking about was talking about the one in the rear and then just general concern about um, yeah. all the receiving structures. And so um, have we checked recently to know what the condition of the outlet of this one uh, looks I, like? Are we releasing turbid water? I haven't gotten a report yet from the project uh, updating since our site visit, but I uh, know that this leads to a stream that then has a lot of controls along it and then even a curtain down at the bottom, which is the kind of mirrors that's going on, on the outside. Um, and that's that's been successful for quite some time now. Okay. So um, I haven't, when I was there on that day, I didn't see evidence of setting the like, gathering in the stream and walking down it. Okay. So it hadn't top over top yet. So it would be helpful. Um, it sounds like it would be good for Cassie to schedule another site visit. Okay. But it'd be helpful also if you could get, you know, any pictures that you can get us yeah. to document conditions at all of these locations will help okay. to, to back I'll, up. I'll, what I'll, I'm scheduled to do it Friday. So okay. Friday. Excellent. That's right. um, and do you have an update for us at all on the timing of when the under drain is likely to be installed? Well, it's going to be done before the 14th. I don't know the exact date. Okay. But that will be part of that yes, completion of site work. You're going to, they're, they're, they're working kind of front to back, and that's going to be like the last thing they do. Okay. Yeah. And so I imagine to do that, they'll have to have the basin fully dewatered, so they're working right. in the dry at the bottom. Right. Uh, can't recall when we approved that change, what we had in place in terms of any additional, uh, if there were any additional controls we were looking for, because there's not, will there be an outlet to that structure? Or is it just? The under drain should be the outlet. Yeah. So. I understand. It will outlet where, though? Oh, I can show. We can pull up the pictures. Can I should do the design. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't remember. It's all okay. Details. Yeah. This is easy to get. Let's see here. Oh, no. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Has like the plan. Here we go. Okay. Yep. There's an under drain to an outfall. Yep, so there's a distro swale and then under drain to this uh, outfall area. Okay, and that's what I was, it looks like we have a silt fence at the end of that outlet structure, which is our sort of backup for the. Uh, during and post installation, so that's fully stable. That makes sense. To me. Yep, this is the biggest. Oh, way in the back. back. Yeah, yep. Yeah. They didn't do the discharge yet, though, did they? The um, they haven't they haven't installed this under drain yet. Oh, no. They have done some dewatering of it. Yeah. Which, you know, kind of similar. I think you're putting the bag over a little farther back. I can't remember. 
where the bag goes, but somewhere in relation to this, and then oh. it's going to function. It's then functioning in the same yeah. way. That didn't look too bad. Only did it. Yeah. So if you could also get up a more specific timeline yeah. for when okay. I'll be doing that work, so that Cassie can keep an eye on the, the erosion control for the uh, the protections as that's happening. That would be helpful as well. Okay. Cassie, do you want um, do you want a forty eight hour notice on that? What what would work for you? Um, forty eight hours is great. Then I can make sure I can be there to, as quick as possible for y'all to make okay. sure the erosion controls are in place so you can carry on. Okay. Okay. Further comments or questions on this project while we're here? Can you hear me? I'm sorry. It's raining. Like we can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. Uh, I thought I there was a traffic island in the parking lot out by the middle school that it looks like it's planted with a with what I think is an invasive. Um, I, it, it's kind of like a vine-like ground cover. Um, I don't know. Julie, do you know any vine-like ground cover invasive plants off the top of your head that is used in landscaping? Um, no, not off the top of my head. If we had a picture, I might know what we're talking about. But I can look for it at our site visit. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into it, Dan. Thank you. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know what I'm talking about here. I'm doing basic, okay. so <laughs> it, it might be nothing. But, uh, okay, I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get in touch. Okay. Well, I'll set up another appointment for this. Yeah, I'll email you tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. Right now. Okay, awesome. so you're all set? Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. I think so. Thank the you. Commission thank you. We're good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. We yeah. appreciate the update. Yeah. Sorry. All right, returning then to number six, enforcement actions. Do we have any updates, Kathy? Well, we were expecting one on that. Yeah, North Dan Canada, was right? going to give it, but I think he was wrapped up and left. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm that. <laughs> oh, I, for, I totally forgot to mention anything earlier, so I appreciate you remembering because I forgot. Yeah, no problem. So we, we're going to ask for continuance to the 17th because we haven't had a chance to get out there to redelineate that wetland or to do that soil sample that we had talked about. Okay. So no, nothing's going on out there. We just need a little more time. All right. Okay. That sounds fine. So we'll look okay. for that on the seventeenth. Sorry that you had to, to wait not, for that. Nope, not, not, a, not a problem, folks. I, I'll I'll try to get you the information before the seventeenth, so we have something to talk about and not the, at the last second. Okay. okay great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Cool. All right. Um, and Kathy, when you do get that information, we will share it also with. Um, yes, I can do that. Great. All right. Any open space updates? Anything on the orchard? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have had our first meeting with the Comrie School student. So if you all remember, we have yeah. the planning department hired a student to kind of look at this, what possible actions could be taken at the at the site to either incorporate some kind of trail or all these kind of possibilities there. So she's really just got started. Um, we've been trying to in include a bunch of other like stakeholder people like the garden committee and um, agricultural commission and um, uh, Owen Zarrett has a lot of interesting ideas for pollinators and such there. Um, is um, Kathy, is Russell Brandt from next door being included in that discussion at all? Uh, we've been talking to Laura Fisher primarily, but I do need to reach out to him um, again. He was there when we originally started talking about this at like a commission meeting a long time ago. So we need to loop them back in. Um, there's definitely still opportunities to do that. I'm not going to get the final product until January. Okay. And there's going to be like a mid season or like school year date that'll probably happen around Thanksgiving. Okay. So um, we still got a chunk of time, but yeah, I that's a really good. 
I did yeah. see Russell this weekend, and I mentioned to him that there was a Conway School Design person getting involved. So he, he at least knows something's happening. Okay. Thanks, Jay. And I'm going to try to get out there this week, into this week, and uh, do some mowing. Awesome. Great. Yeah, because that's basically once the mowing is done, then that talking about the invasive species management plan, they'll be able to come out there and do the foliar treatment, which they wanted to do this fall. When right. we get a mow first, then they're going to treat and then on to the next steps. And are we still okay on that window for treatment? I believe so. I yeah. know some things like knotweed we're getting towards the end of, but that's not it's an issue. It's not as there. much knotweed there. Yeah. It's really um I think uh, the is still going strong. Yep, and the bittersweet. And the bittersweet yeah. is the bittersweet. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, do we need to update? Is it land stewardship now? Is that that what going by? Is, the, is the invasive people? Yeah. Do we need to update them uh, to let them know that we're planning to mow this week? Yeah. Yep. That, okay. That's where we left it off. She was like, let me know once it's mowed. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to just reach out, reach out and tell her we're going to do it like this week or next week or whenever Jay can get it done. But sounds yeah. good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming nothing on late Nope, nothing on late trip. Nope. I don't think, think we do. What was the off. question? There was some question that you asked me, and I was like, I'm going to answer that. It was with Je with for Jeff about what, when this was put on here. They were looking for input about the conservation restriction, and I believe you told us that the conservation restriction is now done and done yeah. in place. Yeah. So I think we just were were curious about an update on the resolution and, and what was done. Okay, I think I'm gonna take it off, but I'll figure it out. Okay, but I think it's like it's if it's been recorded and it's done, then it's done. There's yeah, not anything to don't need our input at this point, so it's yeah. it merely was, curiosity. It was a requirement to have part of the parcel be put under a CR from like right. an, from an order of conditions from like the 90s. Right. So it was like something yeah, that just needed it was to be done. done. But right. um, that was a big concern, just making sure it got done. I feel like is why it stayed on there. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Um. Compliance updates. Which other projects do we have yes. news on? So the first one that I had something for, okay, we did the school committee, um, 6973 Loudville Road. So I did a site visit what on the- letter is that? Excuse me, it's uh, K. Okay. okay, so um, I did a site visit with uh, Commissioner Carr on the 22nd. It had been raining that morning, but we went out there, it wasn't raining really, which was kind of crazy, but um, we got in like a nice window. But there was four locations where turbid water was seeping through the, the controls. So we, I, as soon as we got back from the site visits, I contacted the property manager and, and was communicating this to them and they've got a plan to take actions to do more. That day they went out and kind of shored up the controls, kind of some of the still fencing were just kind of like over pushed over a little. So they shored those up and then they put um, uh, bales in front of those areas, but more permanent like corrections needed to be done that would take more time like after the rain event. Um, so I'm waiting for an update of what those final uh, corrections were and then an another report of, you know, pictures and everything of what they were. And then the next site visit, next rain event, I'll be looking to see how they fared. Okay, so I don't know how much rain we got today. Yeah, there was rain today and some coming. So if okay. you could press them, please, yeah. for um, an update and photos of their repair work and anything new that's been installed. Mm -hmm. And then um, we should plan to get back out there to take another look at it. I would say, I mean, the rest of the the rest of the week was pretty dry, but uh, I'd like to to get someone out there to take a look and make sure everything looks solid before the next rain. So if you could get that into your schedule, Cassie. I should definitely be able to. Okay, cool. Um, and where the, did you see any, I mean, that's at the top of slope. So did you see any evidence that turbidity was making its way actually down into the resource area? Yeah, or, yep. we yeah, could so see where the down. finger was. And the, it looked like the stream itself from above the site was already kind of turbid coming from who knows where. So it's just kind of was joining turbid water from off site for whatever okay. reason. Um, it's Hannum Brook down there. I don't know what is upstream and around, but um, so, but it definitely was entering that area turbid as well. Like you could see it coming into getting into the channel, the defined, more defined channel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So whenever you're there, none of the controls near the front seem to be having issues, but that's not really where the main or like uh, jurisdictional areas are. So, okay. But I had a fast response from them. They, they got right back to me when I called. So, okay. that's good. And that was the uh, construction contractor? I talked to, it, there's kind of like a bunch of people associated with the project. We yeah. have our monitor who works for our Levesque Associates. Then there's uh, like a realtor who's like kind of owns the property and is kind of man managing all of it. And then there's the contractor. I spoke with the kind of realtor who's managing all of it. And I got an email response from the construction monitor. They had the person who had taken action that day was the contractor. He went out there. There was no one. There was someone working on interior stuff at one of the houses when we were there, but it didn't seem like the general contractor was there okay. um, while we were out there, right? Because there was people, but they were like on that one house, it seemed like. Yeah, they were Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Are we getting, um, are they fully up to date on their stormwater reporting? They're not, no, yeah. that they need to send me a new uh, report. And I, I finally got contact with the construction monitor and was like, what's going on that day? So we kind of need to get it all back up to scale. How far out of date are uh, Let me see if I can click on this here. I did get a report on the 23rd. So before that was the second. So there was a gap from the um, September 2nd to the 23rd. And there were some significant rain events in there. Correct. Right? Yeah, correct. So let's keep a close look on, a uh, close watch on that. Yeah. Show that we're getting them when we're supposed to in timely fashion. Yep. I, you know, for my part, it needed to be reaching out to them more sooner and keeping better track of everything. I no, changed it's my their responsibility. <laughs> and they know that it's their responsibility. Okay. <laughs> I know, but it, we would have caught it sooner. So I kind of revamped my system for keeping track of this, just so, I don't know, as like a notice for all of y'all that like, I'm not, hopefully this won't be happening in this way in the future, just because I've kind of redesigned things. Um, and what was I, but I appreciate you saying that. And um, the other update just generally for this project is that they're not going to be starting any more breaking ground for any of the other houses beyond what's there now for the rest of the construction, you know, okay. till the springtime of next year. Okay. Um, does that mean that at some point this fall they're going to have everything stabilized? Um, well, they need to have it stabilized at least to that degree that like the SWIP requires, right? So that's my assumption is that they're either going to put, you know, still fencing around the major stop piles or something like that. But I'll, I'll talk to them about it and see what the plan yeah, is. Find out what their plan is. Okay, just making a note. Okay, cool. Next one. Um, 99 on Tom Avenue. Um, this is up to you. I don't know if you need to like recuse yourself as this Cherry Street project. Um, I okay. I will recuse. <laughs> Let me know when you're done. Okay, cool. It shouldn't take long. Um, this is letter P, 8P. So it's the, you know, it's, re it's the official order was issued for 99 Mount Tom Avenue because that is the property of like the restoration area, but it's often referred to as the Cherry Street project. There's all that prep work going on up the street. The concern being that there's, you know, there's um, loose soils or they're opening up the ground up the street there. And so they need to make sure all the catch basins and everything, there's not um, turbid water being sent to the out funnel at the end at this stage. So um, the day of the strain event on the 22nd, there is a site manager that the city has hired that works for Fuss and O'Neill. And she called me to let me know that they had noticed she she had gotten to the site and seen that there was turbid water leaving the outfall pipe. And immediately was able to identify that it was because that there was one catch basin along the main street that didn't have a silt sack on it. So they put the silt sack in and by the time I came later that day, it was running clear again. So that was the control that needed to happen. And then they immediately put it in. Um, so, it's just something to keep an eye on throughout the rest of life of the project is like what's coming out of the outfall pipe and is it turbid or and if it is turbid is it getting caught by the coffer dam to then go through the dewatering process um that should let it slowly release so that clear water comes out again from that trapped water um, but as it is right now they don't have the coffer dam installed yet so if anything comes out of the uh, outfall pipe it would go straight into the stream so um they're able to fix it right away there but it's just something to keep an eye on for the rest of the project do yeah. yeah, it's been it's been good. They, there's a couple of different entities. So it's Fuss and O'Neill is hired to monitor the project for the city. The city's involved also as well. And also, 
um, SWCA has been hired by the contractor to do the environmental monitoring during construction as well. Um, so they were there and were helping, you know, deal with the situation with, with this person, Professor O'Neill. It's just they were the ones who happened to call me, but they were there too. So, um, and then I got the SWIP reports associated with that immediately after from SWCA. So that was all good. It was it was a good response to something like that. It was unfortunate that it happened at all because they had had the controls in place, but there had been discussion about them getting taken out and all this stuff. So um, it was it was unfortunate that it didn't happen. But uh, the only other thing generally as an update is that in terms of the controls down around the outfall, there's two types of controls that need to be installed. One was core logs, which are like these really they're like super waddles. They're made of like this husky material and they're really heavy those getting installed around the um, replanting area and just generally along the slope. And then the next stage is going to be installing the coffer dam, which is the sandbags that are going to be immediately around the outfall down slope from where they're going to do the actual excavation. So I have confirmed that the core locks have been installed, but I've not yet confirmed that the coffer dam has been installed. So I'm just waiting for them to tell me that. Once the coffer dam is installed, I'll give them the go ahead to start the actual ground disturbance to replace that outfall. So hopefully we should, in theory, be able to do that quick when the watering bag and all that is sort of kind of put into use and all that. So I'll keep you all posted. Okay, I think that's it. Unless anyone has any questions about any of that. We don't have an acting chair, so next week. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, we didn't finish here. Okay, Julie, we're ready. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Okay, cool. Next one, if y'all are ready. And the last one is 54 Inch Road. So this is the solar project and I just went to visit on the 20th uh, and that was with Mr. Weeks. And we were able to see that there were three areas where corrective action was needed um, where it looked like you know, turbid water down down the controls are just kind of outside the controls um, around a couple of the crossings. So um, I immediately notified them. They got right back to me. Uh, they made the, uh, the repairs and the enhancements to the controls on the 21st. And that was just kind of an immediate, like, making sure, clearing some accumulated sediments and beefing them back up. But they realized that they need to do more um, involved corrections. So mainly what that ends up being is, so the feedback is, uh, actually, Jay, could you mute your sound? I don't know where it's coming from. It's got crazy feedback. I'm going to be Dan. Okay. No? Okay, that's it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so the corrections mainly conduct, uh, are going to be them adding stone to the road, because the, the, the only place that there's disturbed area is the road. The road is kind of like a, a it's very gotten very dirty over time and it, the final product of the road is going to be a gravel road and it's just not there yet so they're going to they're proposing to install and i can show you some pictures of the areas like stone um at one area is like a check dam to like slow the water because there's a hill immediately so they're going to slow it down there and then kind of slow it until it gets to the cell fencing uh in another area where water just seems to be pooling and then traveling away and, and it hasn't reached the stream yet but it kind of traveled into the buffer zone area they want to create like a stone kind of just like mini basin to just catch the water there and let it settle out before it hits the silt fencing to kind of keep it from carrying on they've also removed any of that material that kind of migrated into that area and so i confirmed that that was removed and then again and then that last spot was just more stone along the side of the road and then hopefully once they redo the actual road and make it stone, there, there won't be any like disturbed soil left that should be traveling around the site. But um, we can look at, the, look at the pictures if you all want, or Let's take a look. I wanted to make sure you guys thought that was like a- And are we getting regular reports from them? Uh, let's see when we got the last one from them. Yes, definitely have, but I need to just, let's, I wanna look at it. Because we should be getting them weekly from all of these that we've been discussing. Correct, in yeah. to the rain events, that's right. right. So let's see, monitoring reports. See, I think that this says the second as well, but I'm pretty sure he sent them to me and I just haven't put them in here. 
sometimes that's the other problem is people will email me and I'm like, yes, check, they got it. And then I don't put them in here. So let me double check on that. I don't want to like, you know, say that they haven't been doing it. They have been, but you know, potentially, but we, I've been in communication with them since the 20th. So, um, okay. And let's see here. So the issue of bullying event? I'll show you. So, um, yeah, it'd probably be easier if I just show you these pictures, but I, I know it's a little confusing. So I'll show you the pictures from the 20, uh, I guess 23rd is probably easier because it's just those, those areas. So the first area is most interior of the site. There is, um, we're no longer on the road anymore. The road is like, I should share my screen. It's going to be to the right of this image. And I can find like a map too, if you want to see like where I'm talking about on the map. But so these hay bales were added, these bales down here were added since I was last there on the 20th, just to kind of immediately shore it up. And he's working in there to make sure the last of any of that material that had flowed into this, it's just kind of like a plateau and then it drops off into the stream, but it hadn't reached me. It hadn't reached the stream. It was still like within this plateau area. So is there, there silt fence? Yes. Is it properly towed in? Yeah, it looked like it had been undermined over time. Originally it was, I remember from previous site visits that had been, um, but it looks like it just gotten undermined over time. Okay. Um, so he's working on kind of shoring that back up and they've added a lot of stakes and things. Um, but what they wanna do is remove all this obviously, and then put in a stone like little mini basin, basically where this pile is um, to try to catch, cause water just kind of seems to like collect here and flow down that way and they didn't want to try to like propose any like major grading changes or anything. So seemed like potentially a good solution, at least until the final road is completed and then say revisit it again or is it temporary or permanent? Potentially kind of permanent, just to kind of stop things there. Is that stockpile even supposed to be there so close to the resource area? I you would guess no. It had changed. We can go back to the other picture from board because this has changed. They were like digging it out and trying to re- it's a little different than, let's go back to the other pictures. Cause you make it yes, but I'll go back to the other one and make it bigger. I, sorry, that's a good point too. So this is from the 20th. This pile is from sediment that they don't no, Not stop. all of it, yeah. There, but there was seemingly like a pile of like sand, let's see, that had been accumulating there. This is the image I want. Yeah, this is what it looked like before. And it was just like, there's just a lot of, sand gathering here oh my gosh it also, sorry zoom in, zoom in and, and hold for a second it also looks like there's a gap in their silt fence right up towards the top of the screen now towards you um, can't see my closer up here i know what you mean um yeah exactly right yeah. there yeah uh, between the bell on top and that is just an absurd amount of material to be this is weird and this is the stream right there no so it plateaus for like, uh, I want to say like 50 feet maybe. And then it drops off to a really defined channel up above. The road, like to the left immediately from this image is an array. Behind me where I'm taking this picture, the road is, and it carries on to my right. And then there's a crossing. But I didn't see any evidence of like the material in the stream. It just kind of like was migrating through. So they cleared all that material out of there and they're going to throw some uh, well and seed down, just something just to throw it down. But it was pretty like unvegetated before. It was, you can tell it was just kind of like taking up the space in there. Um, and have they cleared all of this material out? That's my understanding. I'm waiting on a next update because they were kind of just like in the process of it when I was there in that other picture I sent. Because I mean, I would be shocked if this occurred suddenly, all of that material. <laughs> That should be part of their maintenance of the erosion controls, that they're clearing away all the stuff that's right. accumulating against it and disposing of it properly. Yeah, and I hadn't, in the previous reporting, I didn't, hadn't been noted as an issue, so it wasn't aware to me yet. But What's the date in this, this one is from the 20th. Oh. Yeah, and the other one was from the 23rd. So I can go back to the one on the 23rd. Was, if you want. And that's that's the stuff pile stood up in those two days? That's, it. well, so two questions. One, these are, old ancient um ball like that you know how they package up the hay from the field and then they wrap it in that white plastic mm -hmm. just got left behind that's like been there since a long time you look at them and they're like you can see the rotting hay inside and 
I think they've been there for like a really long time. That is in, does that in it? Um, I don't know. It's outside of the limit of work, and it's just like agricultural trash. I don't know. I, I think it's just the clay, the clay matter. Yeah, I know there's the plastic, yeah. but I just think it, it if it was at my understanding, and we can go back to some of my older photos, but when they first or, or, uh, installed the erosion controls, these were like there. It's just there's a lot of other farm agricultural waste, I guess I would say, around the perimeter where they're not working old equipment, old stockpiles of stuff. Um, and they don't have to clean it up if they don't want to. It's not a requirement. Um, Cassie, yes. The, when, what day, is there a certain day of the week that you ask for the reports? No, okay. I, don't have a, I don't have a set day of the week. It's whenever they set their schedule to send okay. them to me. Um, so whatever, whenever, can you email them and ask that when they submit this week's report, which I'm assuming they've not done yet, mm -hmm. I would like to see updated pictures with it, of their erosion controls. I don't know if they typically include those. They do. But, yeah. Okay. I mean, so there's always pictures let's in there. Make sure we put it on them yeah. to, to send in photos so that before you even have to go out there, you yeah. get a sense of what it looks like now and right. it's been improved. Yeah. And there's a picture of the are you going back? You went back to the 23rd? How the heck do I? This is super big property, right? Yes. 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 It's a sol their solar field, so it's it's really big. Okay. I know, my gosh. It's like a two hour site visit. Yeah. I gave you no warning. I felt so bad. Yeah. They're long. Uh, let's see here. So let me show I don't you. know if we would know. There's no evidence of regrading and uh, moving a bird to different places. That was explicitly a part of the design was to do that. They did do that and was permitted to do that, to regrade the area to make it flatter. Right. That was permitted? Okay. Absolutely. Was it part of the design to, to plant? Correct. That is a requirement of the permit as well, which uh, not yet is not installed. It's almost entirely installed, oh, but is, yeah. they have not yet finished. There's some. There's okay. been some like incidental growth in the areas, but they haven't done the formal seeding yet, and they're going to do that. And I every time I've gone out there, I've talked about that. So um, that's forthcoming. But it was part of the permit. What's that? Well, yeah. So if you. Definitely construction sites, but it's kind of like if you look at the other pictures from the site visit, which I don't have as many from the from the 23rd, because I really just focus on those three spots again. I was just there on the 20th. Um, they, let's see, a lot of it is like kind of pretty vegetated. So the other perimeters have been fine, and we walked the whole thing. And it's really just at these three locations that it seemed like this, you know, silty water was starting to get through. Okay, um, good. So yeah. I know that it's isolated. Yeah, yep, just those three spots. Okay. So, but just generally, like, I had just questions about them. Is it okay for them to put in this kind of stone mini basin there? That's not something that needs, like, a change request or something, right? Like, they're just increasing yeah. erosion controls, essentially. Is the construction fence there the limit of work? No, it's the sill fencing. Okay. Um, Dan, do you think, are you, can you chat? Do you think that would even be effective? I don't know if you're following the question. Um, I'm, I'm listening. I, um, so if I get the, if I have the gist of it, there's an area where the, uh, the temporary permit erosion controls aren't being effective. And the question is if using stone to make like a little basin would be a allowable and be uh, more effective is that what i'm hearing right and there appears to be a lot of what looks to be sandy material that had accumulated the, i mean from the picture i would say a depth of six to eight inches in front of so we're not talking about a minor amount of material but they should also be clearing that out regularly so that it's not laying there
We can't hear you if you're talking. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, um, uh, I wish I could look at it, <laughs> but I think there might be a benefit to doing something like that. It's, yeah, yeah. If you can hear me now, there may be a benefit if there was, like, uh, but it was, like, kind of a larger area where some water could be yep. uh, captured and allowed to pool up a little bit so that the... Uh, sediment can settle out. Um, that probably would be better than perimeter controls. Can you hear now? Can you hear me? And my, yeah, because my question was, they were originally like, well, we should just put this rip that. Do you have anything else to add? I've been in and out. I can't really okay. hear. Uh, <laughs> we, we heard, we heard the gist of it, Dan. We're good. Yeah, we, did, yeah, we heard what you said. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Sounds good. I couldn't hear what you were saying for a minute. Oh, sorry. Um, Basically, what I was going to say is that they were they were proposing. I was talking to the contractor uh, at the site visit. He was like, "Well, we could just do it on the other side of the silt fence to catch anything that comes through." And I was like, "No, because that's beyond the limit of disturbance in the buffer zone. Right. So you really got to put it on this side." And then I was I told him I'd let you, let him know if y'all had any other notes. But we do try to avoid to say like, "Do this fix," because then if it doesn't work, they can be like, "Well, we did what you told us to." They right. need to just try it and see if it works, and we'll just kind of keeping communication, which they're absolutely willing to do. Right. Um, they've been very communicative, which has been great. But okay. um, yeah, so I think if it's not any like alarm bells for y'all for them to do add this kind of stone in these places along the road, then I'm gonna say, yeah, go ahead and we'll see how it works. Yeah, I think though, to Dan's point, it's, it's going to be the most effective, I think, if they have, if they're creating sort of a settlement basin mm -hmm. out of stone, right? Yeah. So the stuff can fall out. Yeah. To just put, to just put stone on the surface, I don't think it's going to get that. Oh, yeah. They were talking about, like, kind of some kind of basin, like a, okay. a little bit. So are they going to be excavating? Kind of, but I, but I would assume, like, not with, not like, clear. a big, yeah. Yeah, they are, because, yeah, they were going to bring in the material, and then he mentioned um, a type of small machine. I can't remember what the, what the acronym was that he said, but um, I think that there was going to be some excavation involved, is my understanding. But it's all outside of... The buffer zone, even, or is it in the buffer zone? Uh, hard to say. You can look at the map. It's within the limit of disturbance, at the very least. Likely where they were already doing grading work, okay. anyways. Then I think so it's, the road. I think it's okay. 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 Just double check that. I will. But okay. Because yeah, there. I mean, they're going to be along the entire roadway adding in this gravel stone um when they kind of reveal their final product so um that's what i feel i do feel comfortable saying that it's probably good okay. um but then yeah i'm just going to keep up with them about see how it fares like for all these other projects so okay so do they yes. have deep discretion as to how big it is and if it's within grading areas already I'm not too worried about it. It's within the already disturbed area, certainly around this array as well, where they want to have a road there. They don't want to have like this big basin going into where their road is going to be. It's my understanding. At least I don't anticipate it being like this huge. We just talked about it. He's talking about like, I don't know. I, I envision something like the kind of the area of this table, maybe a little more than that, if that, but um, it might extend a little out underneath the fence. Cause it's like, there's the, there's the fence and then, you know, I don't know, like three or five feet and then the cell fencing. And he was saying it probably is gonna extend like, I don't know, a couple feet or one foot out from underneath the fence. But he was like, we can do it cause it has the clearance underneath the fence. So, you know, the feasibility of installing it is there. So it's kind of where they were at. We could get some measurements. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I can ask like, what was the final like size? I'm, and I'll be going out there once they have it installed. So I can measure it too. Right. 
Okay, cool. Any other updates? Uh, let's see here. <sighs> no, not for any of these other projects. Any news from the city on H or J and when they would be coming to get their COC? H or J. So it's the uh, Millings on River Street. Yeah. Actually, if you were the road. And the pump house demolition? Yes, I know. And, and we've talked about it, and I've talked to them about it. So the pump house is with uh, procurement officer Mike Owens. And that, you guys were able to give me clarity last time that um, we don't necessarily need the as built. We want something, but we don't need the as built, but just some kind of plan that shows the changes because there was a different, a little change. So okay. got to get that generated. And then um, for River Street, I just, we just, I just need to nail uh, Dan Murphy down and get him to submit the paperwork, which is super valid. He's been working on a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, um, it's going to need, it's going to need building again. <laughs> well, it's, it's, we're not going to be looking for it. No, time. it's all silly because now it's covered under the, right. the bundle. So right. it's kind of like, it just needs to be closed out because <laughs> it's already covered. Okay. But, but yeah, I need to just do it. So I apologize for not like making that more of a priority to get it done. But um, it would be nice to have it off the agenda. So I'm pretty Okay. Uh, and we did not get the minutes, so we can't do that. Is that correct? That's correct. Sorry. We'll cut that till next time. Um, and we left the wetlands ordinance discussion on here, but we decided last time that we would have a mini committee, which is Cassie, Deb, and myself. Mm -hmm. And we have not made substantial progress. Cassie, did you get the, I sent you my markups. Correct? I did, and I never okay. responded to you, but I did get them. And basically what I'm working on now is implementing her changes. And then I figured we'd have our little meeting after. Great. So okay, yeah, I'm going to get those together. Okay. So we'll give everyone an update once we've had a chance to get further along with that. Um, if you guys can general? hear me, I have one. If you guys can hear me, I have one, uh, one thing that I've been thinking about today. Go ahead. Um, in that ordinance, do we want to put in something about these banks upgradient of BBW that would not be non-jurisdictional because you know, we come across these on the side of Mount Tom. There's a bunch of them, um, and they've been problematic <laughs> with some of the, you know, some uh, past potential uh, violations and also, like, disputes between neighbors and runoff. And, um, you know, we've come across them on Northampton Street, and now, again, we're seeing them on um, uh, that other new thing. And I guess I don't know if that's something that's covered by the draft ordinance that we have, but that could be another area that in East Hampton would uniquely warrant um, some kind of protection and review uh, that may not be applicable to other communities and so isn't really in the Wildlife Protection Act. It's definitely something we have the ability to do. Yeah. And yes. Yep. That's the one. So I know that there's like a section in there that talks about the jurisdiction and that I think is where you explain it or in the definitions. Yeah. But my, and maybe I, I realized, yeah, we guess we really explicitly talk about this was that we were trying to make those areas jurisdictional yeah. for the commission. Yep. So yeah, that's cool with everybody else. I, I okay. can definitely pursue that Dan to make sure language yeah. reflects that. Yeah, we do it. What's that? Yeah. Thanks Dan, we'll, we'll make a note of that. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's an, you know, that's actually an interesting question of like, I wouldn't anticipate this bylaw is not going to be in place. No, but it is an interesting point. So I, I know. Yeah. Um, I, and, and also too, like, it's generally like not good practice to try to change the rules when people are already in the process. Yeah, so, it's, I didn't yeah, think that's what you were saying. I just, is in, it's under the existing rules. So that's not even a question. It just reminded me that like, I talked to Jeff about this. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta like make sure that I know that <laughs> and that it makes sense to me. So it just reminded me of that, Sarah. I didn't think that's what you're really trying to say. But it was just for my uh, knowledge, sure. uh, when we do the mapping of wetlands, it stops at the property line, right? right? So we don't know anything downstream from any property outside of the property. So. How do we know if there's not a stream there or anything with right outside the property? So it it would not be expected that you would have a property line that exactly followed a resource area boundary, right? 
So in most cases, you would have something on your side of the property that would lead up to it. But we do have cases, and we looked at this when we were doing, uh, when we were reviewing the expansion of the cemetery on, what is that? Everett what Street? Yeah, Everett Street. Um, we did ask the question because we knew that there was a stream on the other side and we asked them to go back and check and delineate riverfront, which might extend onto the property. So we do pay attention to those sorts of things. But that's the that's the most obvious case where you might have a stream off property that has riverfront extending onto property. When you're talking about BBW or a stream itself, you're typically not going to have it end just at your property line. So there's usually going to be some sort of evidence of the overlap. And, and in a technical sense, it's hard because they're not allowed to do a delineation off their property unless they've gotten explicit permission from the other property owner. Yeah. So it gets a little hard on that end. But part of the review, I think, for the commission is to look at like overarching maps and see like, okay, what could be like around? It's part of the due diligence that the commission must perform, I'd say. Right. But that Main Street one, like the Lindsay mm -hmm. Rivers, um, address addressed it. Yeah, it's not uncommon for them to show like this is a major feature that is right there, even though it's technically off the property. I don't think that like breaks the rules or anything. Right. For them no, to do if, that. They're, if they're doing their job, they should be looking at a, at a zoomed out plan and where all of the resources would be and accounting appropriately for what we carry over onto the property they're doing here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other general business? I have a scheduling question. Yes. I understand our next meeting will be the 17th, and I think we're skipping a week because of what used to be Columbus Day, and it's now a different holiday. Yeah. There's so, will there be another adjustment in the schedule to get us back on our regular mode? There will not. So, at the, towards the end of every year, and we're not that far out from I that, know. I suppose, <laughs> um, we, we put together the schedule of all meetings for the upcoming year. Okay. And we go through during that process, and we um, we look at where the holidays fall and how that intersects with our typical meeting agenda. We will have made decisions back then about whether we wanted to add a meeting so we are getting too spaced out. Yep. But sometimes uh, we do wind up between, and that's just where the schedule was set, and we all we would have vetted that sure. by you know December of last year. Yeah. So there will be no no further changes or adjustments. Whatever's on the calendar is what's on the calendar. Okay. So when is the next meeting after the seventh? And not until November. So oh, there's only one in October. There's only yeah. That's what we decided to do this time. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a mix. I've seen in the past. Sometimes we just like well, we just don't have a meeting that, and we have a huge chunk in between, which is a total yeah. fine way to do it. Yeah. But we kind of reworked and said, you know, instead of having a wicked long time between meetings. Best both worlds just have one that's in the middle of the month, so it gets a little thrown off. But yeah. normally, it's the second and fourth Monday. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, don't worry. <laughs> I just wanted to be clear. I know you've got to keep an eye on it. That's right. And then it's not uncommon for us to just not have enough people for quorum the second meeting in November. It kind of works out that way. It's so it's worked out so far, but. We don't we don't cancel just in case so far. We haven't canceled it. Um just because it's close Thanksgiving. And then I think we only have one meeting in December as well. Yeah, exactly. I think we did like a middle thing there as well. Uh, so think. I'm not sure. I have to look at it again. I can't remember. The full schedule should be on the city website. It is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I looked at I looked at I know there's a lot going on in there. There's a lot going on in there. All right. Do we uh, have a motion to adjourn? I make motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Commissioner Clark? Aye. Commissioner August? Aye. Commissioner Weeks? Aye. Commissioner Whittemore? Aye. Commissioner Ryan? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Buttrick? Aye. <laughs> right, motion carries. It is 7.30. We are closing uh, this meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission. Our next meeting will be October 17th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.